So what is the fruit of the Spirit? Well, narrowly speaking, the fruit of the Spirit is a list of virtues that Paul gives us in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23. And it, it's um, virtues that the, the Spirit of God cultivates uh, in us that have direct bearing on the totality of who we are and, and what we do. It, it, it speaks to everything about us. Uh, so there are, um, there are virtues that describe our disposition towards God, um, like love, joy, and peace. Those that describe our disposition towards others, like patience and kindness and goodness. And even uh, our inward disposition, how we are internally, like uh, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. And there's plenty of overlap between those categories as well. Um, the fruit of the Spirit highlights um, the ways that we think, the ways that we uh, speak, the ways that we, we live and act that are distinct and different from the world. We are different from the world because we have the spirit of the next world residing in our hearts, uh, slowly but surely transforming us. Um, I, I think that nearly every Christian is familiar with the phrase, the fruit of the spirit. Many Christians have them memorized. They know them by heart. But the real question is, do our hearts know them? Do we actually live them? The fruit of the spirit is God's will for our lives. It's what he's doing in our hearts that makes us distinct from the world. The unnatural uh, or the unconverted man, the natural man, uh, might show glimpses uh, of these graces, but that's all they will ever be, just glimpses to actually have these graces means you have the Spirit. Paul tells us in Romans 8, anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to Christ. So uh, when we start loving in real ways or having uh, a, a peace that surpasses understanding or when we um, are reviled but we respond in gentleness and in kindness, this is, this is proof that we belong to Christ. We are not the world's. We, we belong to Jesus. Another important thing to keep in mind uh, about the fruit of the Spirit is the way that it's described as as fruit. Um, Paul uses a collective noun there, uh, and so we don't want to, we want to distinguish, it's helpful to distinguish the different characteristics, but we want to also um, make sure we say that if you have uh, one of these fruits, you will bear all of them. He doesn't just work love in one Christian and kindness in another and self-control in another. Now, we might show them in varying degrees. You know, we know people who are more patient than other people, of course. Um, but, but this is God's uh, promise to us, is that when we have the Spirit, we will start to live in these specific ways. And another important thing to keep in mind is the picture of fruit reminds us, of course, of growth. And so, um, the Holy Spirit does not uh, implant fully mature virtues in our lives so that when you become converted, when you become a Christian, all of a sudden you are the most loving person, you are the most peaceful person, the most joyful person that there ever was. Um, no, just like uh, you plant an apple tree and um, it's not like all of a sudden uh, you have a harvest of apples. No, rather each season you wait and you watch that fruit grow and develop. And that's what happens in the Christian life. And so that, that imagery, that metaphor, I think, is really important to make sure we don't get disheartened or discouraged. Uh, it's, it's a guarantee that God is doing a work, and, and it is His work. It's the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, but it's a work that is slow, um, but it's steady, and it always gets the victory.